the first thing before running hyper dvg is that we have to disable vbs and hvci in the target machine uh hyper dvg and uh, vbs or hyper v both of them are hypervisors running on ring minus one and these hypervisors are not compatible with, with each other and we should disable vbs and it's some sub components like hvci in order to run hyper dvg but the thing is if you want to utilize hyper dvg in a nested virtualization uh, environment like uh, you you want to use it on vmware workstation player or vmware workstation pro we have to ensure that the vbs and hyper v is disabled on both the host and the guest machine generally if you want to just run hyper dvg you need to uh run it uh, on uh, you need to just disable vbs and hvci in the target machine but in case you want to run it on a vmware machine you have to disable it on both host and the guest machine uh, at the time of recording this video vmware workstation and Hi Hi uh, hyper v due to using some apis uh, hypervisor apis they are compatible with each other but the problem is that VMware Workstation's nested virtualization feature is not supported when Hyper-V is running in the host. So we have to disable the both VBS and HVCI on the host because we want VMware to support the nested virtualization. And also we have to disable this, uh, this protection on the target uh, debug in the target guest. Both of them should be disabled. If we want to check whether the VBS is running or not, or uh, we want to know that whether Hyper-V is running, we have to use the system information on the start menu and, uh, to, and click uh, on, on this app to check whether the VBS is running or not. Let's see an example. Okay, now let's see how we can install uh, Hyper-VG on a target virtual machine. Later, uh, I will also describe how to do the same with VMware Pro, but right now let's see VMware Workstation Player, which is free for non-commercial use. I go, I already installed a Windows 11 here. I have to enable nested virtualization because HyperDVG used nested virtualization. Uh, so we have to enable the nested virtualization, virtualize Intel uh, VTX EPT, and this is not AMD, and then virtualize IOMMUs. Uh, I click OK, then start this machine. As you can see, there's an error message. If you don't see this error message, then it's perfectly fine. You were able to run your, uh, your target uh, virtual machine, and you can skip this... Uh, uh, section but right now as we can see here it says that virtual virtualized Intel VTX uh, EPT is not supported on this platform so continue without virtualized VTX no this is not something that we want HyperDVG is not able to run without nested virtualization so I click no and it said that uh, it's failure no <clears throat> uh, both uh, at the time of recording this uh, VMware and uh, Hyper-V are compatible with each other so if you just not enable the nested virtualization you can easily run this VM but this is not something we want so in order to make uh, VMware uh, or force VMware to run in a nested, virtual, nested virtualization support we have to do some modifications on the host as well as in the target virtual machine I, I try to check whether Hyper-V is running on this system or not. Uh, I go to the system information. On this system uh, information, you can see that virtualization-based security is running. And this is not compatible with VMware nested virtualization support. And also there are also other uh, virtualization based services, uh, hypervisor has been detected and it's not good. This is not how we can run HyperDVG. Uh, to disable this first I uh, type uh, core isolation or 
uh, and go to the core isolation and disable it. Make sure to enable it again once you've finished working with HyperDVG. And after that, I will tr go to the Windows features, uh, turn Windows features on or off here. Uh, then I will disable Windows uh, hypervisor platform and uh, Windows virtual machine platform. Both of them should be disabled. Make sure if, if uh, one of them is selected, uh, just disable both of them. And after that, click OK. No, uh, wait, wait for it. And, uh, and once you uh, disable this feature, you have to restart your computer. So I stop the recording. And after uh, once the computer is restarted, I will back here again. Okay, we restart uh, the computer and uh, once uh, the computer started again, uh, again I go to the system information and uh, we, we uh, go here and uh, we can see that uh, virtualization based security is not enabled. Uh, so we are okay to run uh, and uh, see whether uh, VM or target VM is running with a uh, uh, nested virtualization support or not. Uh, there are also other options for disabling uh, VBS. You can see the documentation, but enabling these two options should be enough. Uh, I recheck it again, and uh, I'm sure here that virtualized Intel VTX or EPT is set, as well as virtualized uh, IOMMU. So I try to run it again and no, you can see that the VM is running without any error that virtualization is not supported, it's just running fine. The second thing that you should check here is you have to check whether the target VM also uh, runs with a Hyper-V module or not. Uh, most of the time, if you run it like this, it's uh, disabled by default, but we will double check it to make sure whether this VM also uh, is running based on VBS or not. So again, I go to the system information. As you can see, virtualization based security is not enabled here. So it means that we can run HyperDVG without any error. Uh, we can run it in a nested virtualization uh, of this target VM. But if this VM is also running, we, you have to double check it. You have to make sure that the target VM also uh, doesn't support uh, Hyper-V. Uh, again, you have to do the same thing. You have to do to the core isolation. As you can see here, it's disabled. And also you have to uh, disable Windows features for hypervisor. As you can see, both of them are disabled, so we are good to go. Now we are ready to attach to HyperDVG and in the next section I will uh, describe how we can load HyperDVG drivers. The next step after disabling HVCI and uh, VBS on, the, on both host and the target guest is uh, to attach HyperDVG. Before attaching to HyperDVG, uh, we have we should know that HyperDVG has some drivers, and those drivers are not digitally signed because it's not allowed. Uh, for, because HyperDVG has uh, some memory modification functionalities, like all other debuggers, and so and uh, it uh, Microsoft won't allow us to sign uh, the driver for the HyperDVG. So we have to find a way to bypass uh, the driver signature enforcement 
and uh, the patch guard in order to run or driver. For this purpose, there are plenty of options. I want to uh, explain all of them in details. But the first option is to attach KDNet or attach uh, WinDBG into the target uh, VM or in the into the target machine. Uh, it's because once you attach uh, uh, WinDBG to a target VM machine, uh, by default, uh, uh, the driver signature enforcement will be disabled because a debugger like WinDBG is attached. And after that, we can use use uh, use the fact that the DSE or driver signature enforcement is disabled and load uh, the drivers for HyperDBG. Or uh, if uh, WinDBG uh, starts uh, from very first early stage of the boot, uh, the patch guard is also disabled. So uh, there are some commands in HyperDBG that are not compatible uh, uh, with patch guard, like syscall command, which we will see in, in the future uh, sections. But uh, this, if you want to use all of the commands of HyperDBG, uh, some of them are not patch guard compatible. So we have to disable patch guard in order to use them. Or if you just don't want to use those commands, then it's pretty okay. Just disable the driver signature enforcement. For the first scenario, I use KDNet uh, to attach a WinDBG to the target VM. First of all, we have to install Windows SDK. We can download it uh, uh, from uh, Microsoft website. And after that, we have to make sure to select the debugging tools for Windows to install WinDBG. Once the WinDBG is installed, uh, we will go to, the, uh, to this directory and uh, we will find the, uh, the location of the WinDBG where the uh, executable file for WinDBG is located. And uh, beside that, there are two files. One of them is kdnet.exe and another one is uh, verified uh, NIC. Uh, that, uh, we, we have to copy those files on the uh, target uh, uh, target guest machine, target VM machine, and after that uh, run the KDNet uh, as administrator to see whether or uh, computer uh, network uh, adapter supports uh, debugging over KDNet or not. After that, we can specify the host IP address and a port address, preferably in this range. Uh, to start uh, attaching WinDBG to the K uh, KDNet. Once we're done with it, we have to copy the keys of the WinDBG to the host computer and use it in, the, in an instance of uh, WinDBG. Let's see. The first thing here is uh, to set up Windows SDK. So I will just go and search for download Windows, any Windows that you see SDK. Uh, it might not be the latest version of Windows once you're watching this video. So just download the latest version of the Windows SDK and this URL also might be changed. So just search for it. After that, you can uh, install it by using it by downloading the installer or downloading the entire ISO file. So I uh, just use this Windows SDK setup. I I want to install it on the default path. Uh, and after that, uh, you can see, you can see plenty of options here, but I only uh, need uh, debugging tools for Windows. Uh, yeah, also, all of them are needed if you want to just use uh, Windows SDK, but in, in case just it's a uh, lab setup, uh, we only need uh, debugging tools for Windows. But if you have, uh, if you want to develop or you want Windows SDK, then you probably should select other options as well. But for now, just let's select the debugging tools and then install the uh, Windows SDK. Once we installed uh, WinDBG in the target host machine, uh, we can continue here. There is no need to install 
Windows SDK or WinDVG in the target debugging machine. We just need to install it on the host machine. So I will try to search for WinDVG. I will go to this path, uh, find KDNet as well as uh, verified uh, NIC list. Yeah, here. These two files should be enough. I try. I will paste it on a folder. Let's say test here. Uh, in this machine, in the target virtual machine, I uh, run a CMD as administrator. And I will go to the path where this KDNet is located. I type KDNet to see that whether the uh, network debugging is supported. And we can see that the network debugging is supported in this uh, NIC. So it's good. And now we should specify the target host machine's uh, IP address. For this purpose, I go to the host machine. Uh, no, no need to write as administrator. Uh, on the host machine, I run ipconfig. And you can see that uh, the VMware Workstation uh, network adapter is uh, located at this address. So I'll go back uh to the guest again uh this time i type i to config here and uh actually we need this address yeah we are in vm net 8 so in this is the same address range here so we have to specify the ip address of this machine this host machine which is uh, this address, I will copy it here and bring it uh, again to the KDNet on the debuggy. I start with KDNet and after that I put the uh, IP address and then I specify a default port. I will use this port as the default port. And uh, it gives me a key which I can use to debug this machine. So I copy this uh, uh, on a batch file. No, let's just uh, keys, save it as keys. Uh, and after that, we have to restart this computer in order to attach a WinDVG to it. So before restarting it, I, I try to run a WinDVG with this information. I again go to uh, find WinDVG. Copy it as path and paste it here. You can also create a batch file. So once you uh, click on a batch file, this command just opens for you. I just typed it manually. Uh, now WinDVG is listening uh, for this debuggy. I press uh, Shut down R. Uh, as as you can see here, this target is connected to the WinDVG. Uh, the thing about this method is that uh, by default, HyperDVG. Uh, doesn't use any instance of uh, any anything from WinDVG. It's just because we want to disable the driver signature enforcement and 
uh, we want to also uh, disable uh, the patch guard on the target machine this is one of the ways and it's also the recommended way of uh, attaching to hyper dvg once we're done here we can debug this machine and as you can see there's a test mode here and we can run the drivers on this machine uh, let's continue and run HyperDVG uh, while we keep this instance of WinDVG open. Uh, uh, we, we have to move the drivers of HyperDVG on both uh, the debugger in the host and in the debuggy. Uh, before that, we have to uh, add a serial device into the target debuggy VM. Uh, so let's wait until this uh, virtual machine is loading and as you can see uh, each time it starts it connects to this instance of WinDVG so we have to keep WinDVG running each time and you can see the, the, file, uh, the files that are here and after that I, I, I turn this machine off Then I start the VMware workstation again. I go. Uh, I I I should I should uh, power this on. Uh, just one click. Uh, I go to edit virtual machine settings, and uh, there is a serial port. I will delete it. Uh, I have to add a serial port to this. I previously added, so I delete it to show you how to add a new serial port uh, you have to also uh, uh, I will also show you how to do the same thing on VMware Pro as well but this is the instruction for VMware Workstation Player I click on add uh, on add serial port then I use use the name pipe I use uh, pipe uh, whatever name that you choose here will be used later this end is the server and the other end is a, a virtual machine click ok and run this debug make sure to keep WinDVG uh, running because uh, this machine needs to be connected to WinDVG in order to disable the driver signature enforcement and patch guard attached to it from very first boot start of the system no I go on hyper dvg run it there is no need to run hyper dvg with administrator privilege on the host but in guest you need to run it with administrator privilege don't worry again about this command I will talk about it later but for now we use the dot debug command to just connect in uh, the debug to connect to the debug uh, we use that debug uh, remote named pipe and uh, we can also use the dot uh, debug remote serial with a specific baud rate and com port name this is for the times that we have a physical com, uh, com drive or a physical uh, serial drive but right now we are debugging a virtual machines so using name pipe that we added as serial is enough uh, dot debug remote is in debugger and dot debug prepare is for the debuggy so I just copy this command in host and run it first here no it said that waiting for the debuggy to connect I will go back uh, to the debuggy and this time run the debuggy hyperdvg as administrator i will again type debug and this time we have to select the correct uh, com port uh, i will select com1 to see whether it's working or not as we can see here uh, it's probably wrong because it said that the, the debugger is sending it's probably some uh, problems handshake or we didn't uh, select the correct com port so I just 
close HyperDG right again to select the correct uh, COM port. This time I select COM2. There might be also a COM3, COM4. You have to test all of them to see uh, what's the COM port or you can also see it from the device manager to find the correct COM port. I just try to test it, COM2 and yeah. It's now connected uh, to the HyperDVG as the driver signature enforcement is bypassed and it seems the symbols uh, configure, conf we can configure the symbol pass, we'll see it later. And uh, we can also press Ctrl C to pause the debugging. As you can see this debugging is now paused and we cannot uh, do anything with it. And once we press G, it continues. This way, you can use uh, HyperDVG and WinDVG. Use WinDVG just to uh, disable the driver signature enforcement uh, and patch guard, and after that, connect to HyperDVG. There are also other methods which I will show you later. There is a second option if you prefer not to use KDNet if you prefer not to use WinDVG on your target machine there are also several other options uh, if you just want to use the WinDVG uh, which is the recommended way of using HyperDVG is pretty okay you're done with it and now you can use HyperDVG but in case if you don't like to use uh, WinDVG uh, you can uh, attach it uh, attach to HyperDVG by temporarily disabling the driver signature enforcement. Uh, the thing is, this action should be done in the guest machine, uh, in the target debuggy, in the uh, target virtual machine, and this is probably the simplest way of disabling driver signature enforcement on both Windows 10 and Windows 11. But the thing is, this method is temp uh, is temporarily uh, it, it temporarily uh, disable the driver signature enforcement so once you rest, uh, restart the computer the driver signature enforcement will be automatically turned itself on uh, in order to disable the driver signature enforcement uh, we have to press uh, and hold the shift key on keyboard and cl click on the restart button then we go to the troubleshot uh, troubleshoot uh, and uh, advanced options startup settings and after that we will restart uh, the system uh, and once the computer restarts we'll see a list of options we have to press F7 or 7 number on the keyboard to select the dis disabled driver signature enforcement and once the computer starts now uh, the, the we are able to uh, install unsigned drivers on target machine but the thing is you have to keep in mind that this method won't disable patch guard so some of the events that we see in the future like syscall which are not uh, patch guard compatible will cause blue screen of that but if you don't want to use those events it's pretty okay to use this way let's see how we can perform it Let's see how we can uh, temporarily uh, disable uh, the driver signature enforcement. I press shift, I keep pressing shift and then go to the restart. Uh, meanwhile, my shift is uh, still pressed. Uh, once it boots again, it now uh, writes pulse wait, which is different from the normal bootloading of Windows. I go to troubleshoot, uh, a startup setting. After that, I go to the advanced option and now into the startup settings. Then I play, I push restart. Note that these options will be available later. Now at this stage I press 7 or F7 in order to temporarily uh, disable the driver signature enforcement. 
Meanwhile, I run one instance of HyperDVG here. Go to the uh, driver that I shared here. and load the driver as you can see this way we can easily run hyper dvg but this method is also not a recommended method because as i mentioned in the slides uh once you restart your computer again it turns uh, the, the the this uh test uh, or this uh, way of disabling uh driver signature enforcement will be disabled again and you have to each each time that you want to load driver you have to do this again and again and also patch guard is uh, running in the system so some of the commands uh, are not supported or will cause blue screen but uh, it's a very fa quick and fast way of loading hyper dvg without yeah, without uh, attaching to KDNet or WinDVG. Another way of attaching, uh, another very cool way of attaching to HyperDVG is by using EFI Guard project. If you just okay with uh, the previous methods, it's pretty okay. But this is a very cool and recommended way of uh, connecting to HyperDVG. If you don't want to use WinDVG, if you don't want to use KDNet. Or if you don't want to temporarily disable uh, the DSE uh, by the previous method, you can use the EFI guard project to disable both patch guard and driver signature enforcement. If you want to uh, run, uh, this is also a recommended way of attaching to HyperDVG. This is really cool. Uh, you can use this project on the physical machine if you want to run HyperDVG locally, uh, I mean in VMI mode or if you want to local debug your host machine, you can use it on your uh, physical machine. But if you want to just uh, uh, use it on a debug a virtual machine or a VM machine, you only need to use it in the target PM. So there is no need to run it in the physical machine if you want to debug a target VM virtual machine a target guest for this purpose first download or compile the latest version of the EFI guide from this repository uh, after that uh, we have to use uh, we have to open a, a PowerShell uh, with administrator uh, token then we run uh, the following commands as you can see here mount wall command with a slash s flag mounts the EFI uh, system partition on the M drive and then we will copy the specified uh, EFI guard files into the system partition now we need to configure the BIOS to boot uh, from EFI guard then we reboot the VM and when uh, the VM uh, where a slash screen is showing we, we will keep pressing escape and F2 to get into the BIOS, then we go. We will go to set up it. For more information, please refer to uh, this link. But I want to show you how I set up this uh, EFI project on my machine. Let's see. Now let's see how we can use the EFI Guard project in order to load uh, the driver and bypass patch guard. I will go to the target virtual machine as I previously said we can also use this project on uh, our local physical machine but right now it's only enough to run it on the target virtual machine as I only want to debug this virtual machine I don't need to use hyper DVG in VMI mode I extracted the project here in downloads and after that uh, I try to run these commands first run a PowerShell uh, I forgot to run it as administrator uh, 
I run this command after that we'll go to uh, CD here let's move these folders on C drive just just to make it more you can move it anywhere there is no need to just put it here in C drive I just move it because it was easier for me to uh, run this command after that you can move it somewhere else or even delete it so I run this command to uh, move the uh, loader uh, loader that e uh, EFI uh, to uh, this path to, to the current path uh, it, the loader that EFI doesn't need any interaction for more information please read the pages uh, or read the uh, target repo of e EFI guard and after that I will copy this file uh, uh the next step here is uh <clears throat> just uh going to the boot menu to the bios menu of this vmware so uh, i will set everything here i will go and restart and once the vmware splash screen shows i keep pressing escape and f2 buttons uh, so we'll go here in the boot manager uh, there are uh, plenty of options here like boot windows normally uh, windows boot manager we'll go to in, uh, enter setup uh, it, there are boot from a file uh, and or configure boot options we'll go to the configure boot options and uh, there is an add boot option here uh, in the add boot option uh, we will uh, select the uh, target uh, EFI file uh, for hyper DVG uh, I use it here uh, no, we are not gonna use uh, this one. We use the one with GPT pro, uh, prefix. Uh, let's test this one uh, to, to uh, see whether we can find the EFI. Yeah here uh, you can see that there are two files microsoft and boot i will go to the boot you can also uh, search to find these files I, there is one microsoft for efi uh, files and there is one boot and here uh, we choose loader.efi the file that we previously downloaded from the github repo and then we will uh, create some uh, optional description here I press enter and uh, put some name for example Sina as the description uh, Sina uh, Sina and as optional data again I use Sina Sina after that I will commit uh, changes and exit uh, no uh, <laughs> we can uh, configure uh, uh, the, uh, drivers or boot from a file but I will uh, exit to the boot uh, maintenance manager and uh, I want to change the uh, boot order of uh, this system uh, we can uh, Boot from this Sina uh, uh, Sina, but uh, I press the plus button here uh, to uh, move them up. So 
So uh, I will go again to uh, enter setup and configure boot options. Then I go to change boot up, boot uh, order because I want Sina Sina to run f as the first. Uh, I, I selected as the first uh, boot option here it's currently the windows boot manager is the first option so I, I I will go and select it press enter on the change to order then uh, by uh, uh, adding by uh, pressing plus you can move it up I will move Sina Sina as the first option now you can see that Sina Sina is the first option I will commit and exit because I don't want to uh, run Sina Sina each time uh, or don't want to come to this boot, ma boot menu each time so I, uh, I change the order of boot and don't let the Windows boot manager to come before uh, Sina Sina I will commit it and then I will go and exit the uh, booth manager and uh, after that I will shut down the system. Uh, now I run this uh, virtual machine again. As you can see uh, EFI guard uh, entered and it also doesn't need any interaction because we selected the loader now it patched the NTOS uh, KRNL and uh, now it boots uh, the windows Once we are here, uh, the next step is uh, the, the, once we are here, the patch guard is disabled. EFI guard disabled the patch guard, and uh, now we want to uh, ask uh, EFI guard to disable uh, driver signature enforcement for us. I have to run. A CMD as administrator and I run it with dash C to check and it said uh, the, uh, the check was successful so uh, we can use this uh, if I guard, I will uh, press D to disable it, and it said that C option, uh, which is located here, is successfully disabled the DSE, and we are sure that patch guards also uh, didn't start. Uh, I go again to HyperDVG to test whether this option works. As you can see, there is no WinDVG here. We didn't attach any WinDVG. Uh, I will use dot connect local and then load VMware. <coughs> VMware. We can see that uh, we successfully entered uh, and load the driver uh, and there is no uh, driver signature enforcement error here. Uh, you can, as I mentioned before, you can also use uh, this EFI guard on your local system if you want to local debug your host system. But this way, you can avoid using uh, WinDVG and just uh, run HyperDVG by EFI guard. Uh, we already see how we can use the EFI guard project on VMware Workstation Pro. Now let's see it with the VMware player. Uh, first, I uh, you can download or compile uh, EFI guard and move it in the target uh, machine. Uh, no, exactly same as VMware Pro. I want one uh, PowerShell as administrator. Uh, copy some commands. Uh, Uh, go here 
this time it's uh, located on the desktop so I will uh, copy Uh, if I got uh, boot loader dot EFI here, uh, I got and exactly same as VMware Pro, uh, I restart this machine and keep pressing escape and F2 once the splash screen of VMware is shown. Again, I go to enter setup, uh, configure boot option, add boot option, and uh, this time I go to EFI, second option, boot, then I use loader.efi here as uh, the input name. I choose Sina2, Sina2. Uh, again, as the uh, input optional data, I press enter and Sina2, Sina2. Then I go commit changes and exit. Uh, I go to configure again change boot order, press uh, enter and press plus button to bring the Sina, Sina2 to Sina2 to as the first bootloader, then I commit changes and exit, then I uh, go and exit the boot maintenance and shut down the system. Uh, again I run this virtual machine and as you can see, the EFI Guard project is now running. I go to the Hyper DBG again. Run dot uh, debug command. Debug, we should prepare it. Uh, uh, we are not yet listening here, so it keeps waiting for the debugger. But meantime, at the meantime, I go to the EFI Guard project, uh, run a CMD as administrator. I, I will check it and instead successful so I press uh, dash D to disable the driver signature enforcement and now I will try to listen as the debugger here as you can see the driver is successfully the VM module is successfully running in the target VM and this way we didn't use uh, WinDBG. Uh, we just you, uh, we just use the EFI Guard project to bypass the patch guard and the driver signature enforcement. And you can use the debugger here. This is also one of the recommended way uh, we recommend to use WinDBG or use EFI Guard. Both of them are okay.